Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, in which we speak to small cap CEOs about what's going on to companies. With us today, really have her, have her on for the first time ever, Tracy Costa. She's founder and CEO of PK Beans, trades on the CSC and the stock symbol Bean, B-E-A-N, and for our friends in the U.S. under PBBSF. Now, for those of you new to the story, that's going to be a lot of you because it's the first interview we're doing. Mind you, we're also going to be welcoming on some PK Bean investors, so we're, welcome to the show. Uh, this is a revenue generating, woman led, and that's going to be an important part of this. Uh, children, children's clothing brand, and they got a very unique and forward thinking business model. Uh, you're going to love what you hear, but let me give you some of the numbers just to see that more than just lip service, they did 1.5 million dollars in revenue for in 2020. Uh, that's they had a 55 percent increase in online visitors, 10,000 customers, a 62 percent return customer rate. Anybody be jealous about that? On mm -hmm. and on and on. We got more data, but they're also uh, awarded, I want to say, favorite brand by Jillian Harris. She's a, a lot of you know her, a Canadian television personality, interior designer. So they're hitting on all cylinders. Tracy, welcome to the show. Glad to speak with you. Thank you, George. So happy to be here. All right. Well, listen, we're glad to have you because anytime a small cap company is, you know, putting up numbers like that, that tells us you're not only successful today, but that foreshadows some success in the future. So let me ask you this first before we do mm -hmm. a deep dive. When people first hear, including me, you know, the children's clothing space, that's a crowded space. Uh, I think mm -hmm. all of us know that, even guys like me. But you're achieving success. How are you guys doing that? What's the, uh, what's the philosophy there that's leading to your success? Well, I think what it is, I mean, there's multiple facets of why, but we really built a leading children's lifestyle brand focused on sustainability and ethics and enhancing children's lives. And basically what we're doing is bridging the gap between children's fashion and their healthy growth and development. So it's really about being a resource for our customers and being um, part of their, their daily experience and enhancing their children's lives. And it's no, it's no surprise right now, we're really facing a mental health crisis in the world and children more than ever need to play. They need to build that resiliency. They need to build the communication. And um, it's our job at PK Beans to design for playful living. And that's what we do. Yeah, you're it's not really, just, uh, it's really mission based, really, you know, um, really speaking to the millennial parent, the new parent. Plus, the way that we sell is very different, too. We sell through an omni channel. We have a store, bricks and mortar. We have e-commerce. We have affiliates. We have so all of our social media channels. Um, so there's multiple ways in which you're reaching your customer. Um, and, and there's lots of other cool things like our subscription box and all that. And I know we'll get into those things, but that's really about engagement. Yeah, let's talk about that because the pandemic forced a lot of traditional retail businesses to pivot to e-commerce and most people did it poorly. They had no choice. Mm -hmm. You guys did, not only did it really well, but what I like about it is you, did, you didn't just do a straight pivot to e-commerce. You actually mm -hmm. innovated. And the two things I want to talk about are the subscription box and the relay, the secondhand uh, mm -hmm. Part. So talk to us about the subscription box. That's a that's a popular model we started to see in other verticals. How does it work? Why is it so successful for you? Yeah, and the thing is, is ours is really different. At the end of the day, you can buy clothes everywhere, like you said at the beginning. Um, and what we really wanted to do is we wanted to engage our customer and ultimately the customer is the child. Um, and our mission is providing ingredients for a playful life. We design for playful living. And so what we really wanted to do was we wanted to create a platform in which we could engage with the kids. So we created a subscription box called Get Dressed for Adventure. It's a, a, a package that arrives to a child's house once a month. And it basically what it does, it starts with a storybook. It engages with augmented reality because we're engaging them in multiple different platforms. Um, and, then, and then there's active elements of play. Um, there's uh, games, there's outdoor activities, there's scavenger hunts. So we're really taking our mission about play and infusing it into our brand, engaging the customer in the storybook. Our, our characters are wearing the clothing. Um, and so the kids can match the clothes. And then that, we're just going to take that um, even farther into production, television, um, licensed products. Um, and so it's an, an entire uh, Pika Beans club 
it's an entire world. It's an entire universe that they can immerse themselves in. It's, it's an incredible engagement platform. And you know what? There's no one doing it. Well, I, I love the fact that you said the customer is the child mm -hmm. versus, and I would have made this mistake if I had to start a children's clothing retailer, I think, okay, the customer is mom and dad or grandparents and aunts and uncles or whatever. But mm -hmm. because you've taken the approach that the customer is the child, these are amazing experiences. A lot of people like say, oh, we want to make an experience, but you really truly, the fact you're using augmented reality and that yeah. the characters are wearing your, 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 your brands, right? Yeah, they come, those characters in the augmented reality will come out of the storybook. So the kid can look at the storybook. The storybook can be read through, a, 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 um, through an app. So if they can't read, it reads to them, but if they can read, they can read the storybook and they can also use a digital device to have the characters pop out in augmented reality and have That's an engagement great. strategy. But you think about like brands like Walt Disney, you know, this is what Disney does. They create this whole experience and they can immerse the child in it. But when you talk about uh, like who's going to be buying the product, the person that's going to be buying the product is the parent or the aunt, the grandparent um, or the dad. But the thing is, is where, where that ties into them is our values, our ethics, our sustainability. So we're speaking on multiple different levels to the mother or the parent, um, and then also engaging the child. And now we're in the home of the child. Um, and we're taking that even further. We're going to be putting markers on like pajamas. So you could put your digital device over the pajamas and the character can um, go through a nighttime routine. Let's go brush our teeth now. Let's go get our pajamas on. Let's go get dressed or, 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 or get ready for bed. Let's read. And then they can choose on the digital device which story they want to be read. So we're, we're taking it and infusing it in the clothes too. Basically, we, we want to be a helper in the home. We want to we wanna make dressing easier. We want to make family lives easier. We want to make um, we want to make the whole process of getting dressed something that's really should be taken as really an important part of their day. But we want to help in that. So and that's what that engagement strategy does. I don't think I've does. ever heard a brand uh, create that kind of immersive experience yeah. in, in, with, with their customers this way. What kind of anecdotal or maybe even and maybe even empirical evidence, but I'm sure you've got a lot of anecdotal evidence where parents and or the kids are telling you, little Georgie oh. just responded so well to this. And it's, you're way beyond oh, I, just a, a selling, you know, sending me a box of clothes. What kind of, what kind of well, response are you getting? Oh, well, I mean, um, the list is endless, the amount of testimonials we get, because it's hard being a parent. You have enough things to think about, but if you have something that helps your kids be independent and helps them make tasks fun um, it really can transform there's a lot of ways that that our product really enhances kids lives first and foremost I wouldn't have been around for as long as I've been around if our product wasn't second to none so our product transforms people children's lives because it's it's sensory friendly it's easy on easy off um, it's mix and match they can make decisions easy there's so many elements of our product combined with that experience that just um, really enhances a family's life. And to top it off, like you said earlier, I mean, we, we launched in the middle of the pandemic at a time where kids were trying, parents were trying to find activities to do with their kids. They're having to work at home, yeah. um, you know, and manage all of this. This is like, this was the perfect opportunity to launch. I mean, we didn't know that we were, we, we'd even launched a little bit later than we had anticipated. And, and we launched on March 22nd last year when we got in lockdown around the I think the 15th or something like that. So um, it was just really an interesting experience. The testimonials that we receive on a daily basis are really heartwarming. That's why we get up to do what we do every day is just to really help and enhance children's lives. So let's talk about the sustainability mm -hmm. side. Even though I love to keep talking about the product, you almost make me want yeah. to be a kid again, which is great. Um, yeah, there's but, so many facets to, to what we're doing. So yeah, I love talking about all of them. Uh, the uh, You also started the replay side. So uh, I... I that's for lack of a better term, second, second hand, you know, second yeah. kick at the cat, but that isn't yeah. just, again, just to create another line. You, you want to be environmentally friendly. You want to avoid for as long as possible, this pair of, you know, this sweater going into a landfill. So yeah. how does that speak to the customers uh, and how successful is it? Uh, so first and foremost, when I, when I start, 
one of the reasons why I started PK Beans at the time it was called Peekaboo Beans. We rebranded this year as well, or last year. But when I started it, it was because as a new mother, I was very frustrated with the um, the wasteful uh, product that was out there. I mean, I would buy product, it would pill, it would shrink, it would uh, it would fade, it would buckle, and it you know three months later, I'm throwing it in the garbage. It's fast fashion essentially. Um, so one of the things that I really wanted to do when I started it was create a product that's going to be uh, made better, designed better, function better, have grow with me features, um, have higher thread counts, um, and be able to last. Now, we launched PK Replay, which is a worn wear uh, secondhand uh, platform on our site. So we will take back your product and we will sell it for you and we will give you a cut of whatever the sales are. We launched that in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. We pushed it forward because we had launched in our bricks and mortar, but because we were in lockdown, we figured, well, let's just go on online with this. Um, since launching in 2020, we've sold over uh, 2,000 secondhand pieces that would have potentially ended up in a landfill and generated yeah. over $30,000 worth of revenue just very, very early on in, in what we're doing. But what it shows, well, I mean, if you look at- a proof of concept, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, the the statistics now are one in five Americans are, are purchasing secondhand clothes for kids. That's um, 65 million people are preferring to buy secondhand clothing over, I mean, it, we're, we're facing a crisis, an environmental crisis. Textile waste, the landfill is the number two pollutant to the landfill. Um, so it's our sustainability um, initiative to say, well, one, when you buy PK Beans product, you can feel good that it's going to last. Um, so and and so much that we'll take it back and sell it for you with that money back in your product. Now, if it doesn't last because kids spill things that can't stains can't come out, um, they get holes in their knees. I mean, it's not indestructible. Um, we will also take back that product and we repurpose that and we use uh, local sewers who have. Um, organizations locally that have mental health challenges that are, are re um, reinstituting wow. themselves back into the workforce and so it using sewing as their platform and we'll be able to create jobs through that and take people off the streets and sew um, dog toys or scrunchies or uh, bibs or all sorts of different products so we've also sold thousands of those products we launched a, a doll collection um, Lil Bean it's called and we make all uh, doll clothes out of this secondhand product that can't be resold. So it's it's truly about buying from a company that you feel good about. I mean, we all wanna do that nowadays. We wanna put our money in brands that speak to our values. We don't, we don't wanna buy from brands that we feel are um, disrupting the earth, um, that don't have the ethics and the values. Um, and so that's such a big differentiator with us. Um, and the, and the PK replay is going phenomenal. We'll, we're selling hundreds of pieces a week of just secondhand product. And we have a wait list of people who want to go on that. And you know why we have a wait list for that is because our product lasts. You could, a lot of brands could start this, but they would never have any product coming back because it doesn't last. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've got three kids and my wife would buy, I, I won't name any stores on the show, but uh, just so we don't get any trouble, but she would buy <laughs> certain brands from certain stores and the thing was after a couple of months useless it was just useless it's a what, you, you it's, could i could use it, it for a wash your car rag. yeah 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 so so, so th that that's th that's what i'm saying is is that you a lot of brands would be like oh i want to do this but then no one would bring product back because they wouldn't have product to bring back with us we have a wait list of hundreds of people because their kids grow and now they can actually monetize the clothes uh, and and buy more clothes and use that money to buy more clothes. Well, I'm going through it right now. I've got a 12, I've got 18 year old, you know, twin boys and they're, you know, on their way, but I've got 12 year old daughter and, you know, with the pandemic and all that, she hasn't had really had to go do a lot of shopping, but she's grown and we got all these clothes. And I was actually talking mm -hmm. about this with my wife the other day. I said, what are we going to do with all these clothes? Uh, I mean, we're going to give away as many as we can, but how many, you know, yeah. 12 year old 10 12 year old kids do you know well the, the thing well, is, is the, uh, the thrift shops and the Sally Ann's are all full too so um yeah so that that is it's an oh, it's a wonderful initiative and we're extremely proud of it and it just it's brings our values to life 
So this brings a lot more relevancy to being uh, called the favorite brand by Jillian Harris. So this isn't the case of, oh, they make really cool clothes. So they're, yeah, now it's a case so of, cute. It's, the, mm -hmm. it's the complete package. Or is the industry looking at you, Tracy, as a real uh, innovator here? Are you really, within your industry, are, are people starting to take notice and say, wow, PK Beans, Tracy and her team are doing mm -hmm. things better than any of us even imagined? Yeah, I, it, you know, it, it, it takes time for people to, it's like it's only in front of people's faces until they actually need it. And right now, more than ever, the, the world is seeking environmentally friendly brands, um, value based brands. And so now we're really starting to pop up on people's radars. Um, and we just went through an entire with COVID. We had we, we did have some time to be able to um, really comb over our marketing strategies and spend the time to put our best foot forward and um, we're seeing the results of that now. And it's, um, it takes patience, like, you know, to, to, sure. to build, you know, to what you were talking about earlier, it's like, you could be focused strictly on numbers um, and that's short lived. But if you build a brand that's focused on values and engagement and community, um, that's where valuations have a much bigger um, absolutely opportunity, opportunity in the long run. And, you know, um, we've, yeah, been if you're just a churn factory, you sold 10 pairs of pants and 10 sweaters and you're going to be valued in the future strictly on the numbers. That's it. How many did you crank mm -hmm. out? What was your margin? Goodbye. But when you build a brand, the way you're doing with PK beans, we know empirically valuations are significantly mm -hmm. larger for brands. And, and you're, I yeah. mean, I'm excited just talking to you and I know who PK mm -hmm. beans is, but to hear it come out of you, to, to hear it said, not as a corporate line and we just, you know, mm -hmm. this, but to see it come out of you so naturally uh, is, yeah. is, is really exciting. Let's talk numbers though. So yeah, it's funny they're saying you don't run the business by the numbers, but you have had impressive growth and yeah. some impressive KPIs, you know, at the height of the pandemic. I kind of gave a few there. Do you have any other highlights? Because that's always the important part too. No matter what, we do look at the numbers at some point. Yeah, I mean, we've had, uh, we have a 65% returning customer rate, which the industry standard is like 20 to 25%. Yeah, that's a um, last year, we had a 29 times return on our ad spend. So the more, the more money we put on it, we are generating upwards of 29 times, which is- That's unheard of. It's, it's, it's incredible and it almost sounds like strange, but these are true statistics. Why is that true? Why is that Tracy? Why do most people get two to four X on their ad spend? What are you guys doing different in your marketing, in your ad spend? That's getting, I mean, that's, oh. that's insane. 29 times. And I believe it. That's unbelievable. Yeah. How are you guys doing that? Um, we reach our customer in many, many different ways. We test out many, many different types of marketing um, campaigns to see what works and what doesn't work. We have an amazing marketing team that um, has a lot of uh, technology built into the website to be able to tap into where people are going, what they're buying, what they're um, liking. We have the funnels that, uh, you know, that can bring people that haven't shopped in a while. We can bring funnels that uh, for people that have abandoned carts, like there's lots of different, there's multiple different things that we're doing. Um, and then with our subscription box, we're reaching a whole nother customer that way. It's, it's many, many things. Um, and with a, a returning customer rate, like we have too, it's just, um, it's just customers really come back. They um, engage in the brand in multiple different ways. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not five dollars to acquire me the first time. And if I'm if, I, if there's a 65 percent, 65 percent of me are coming back. That's a zero acquisition. That's zero dollars yeah. you spent to get me back. So you just drive down that cost yeah. and drive up and the that, return. And that's a brand story. I mean, ultimately, we want to build the brand. So we're, you know, we're creating content that is. Uh, really resource based. We work with doctors, psychologists. Um, we work with therapists, child developmentalists. We we want to put content out, do IG lives. We want to do Facebook lives. We want to do blog contributions that are actually content that are going to help uh, be a resource for families, rather than just trying to sell them clothes. I mean, you can buy clothes anywhere. Um, so yeah, you're, I, yeah, I'm so glad you're saying this because again. 
it is a commodity business. If you just, you know, if you just sourcing, racking, and selling, well, good luck. You got a hundred. It's, it's a race to the bottom, right? It's yeah, a it's a to race to the bottom. You got a hundred. You're just grinding, grinding, grinding until you ninety nine percent chance you just die. You just don't make it. And if you yeah. might be lucky, the one percent to get through. But the way you're building it, there's almost no competition. Like I tell you right now, mm -hmm. I already know of a good friend. I don't want to name him on air, but I already know mm -hmm. of a good friend who just had a baby. I guaranteed because we want to send them something and send them a five hundred dollar gift certificate uh, mm -hmm. from from your we store. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not and not just because <laughs> you know you're a client because I love what you're telling me about and I know they're going to feel good it. about your spending. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, yes, we it's, we work hard for our money. We want to put it where we feel good about what we're doing. So we have so much. I mean, we're. We barely touched the market in the U.S. That's our next focus is just moving into the U.S. And so. that's why I wanted to ask you, where you go? Look, this model is so good. It has to bust out. It has to grow. Mm -hmm. So if everything, you know, goes as planned, and that doesn't mean if everything goes perfectly because no business goes perfectly, but no. <laughs> if everything goes, you know, pretty much as planned and stays, stays within its lane, where do you see the company a couple of years from now? Because I see you building a fantastic brand that doesn't have any boundaries at the end of the day, at least mm -hmm. not, at least as far as North America goes, you won't have any boundaries. Well, here's the thing. I mean, we want to grow into the U S but ultimately, and that's, that's obviously where the money is as far as growth goes, sure. but ultimately we want to build out a lifestyle, continue to build this lifestyle brand. I don't believe that we are just a, an apparel line. This is our jumping off point, but we are looking at additional categories because we're building the marketing funnel we're bringing in the customer, we're bringing in that loyal um, fan base. And so for us, it's about growing categories. It could be potentially about um, uh, consolidation of other brands that are enhancing to us um, that we're not covering in our space as far as categories. Um, I'm, I'm working on some pretty cool things right now. And um, so it's, it's going to be very multifaceted especially when you look at what the opportunity is with the Pika Beans Club, because that also has massive licensing opportunity. It has production and television opportunity. It has um, accessories and um, hard goods. That's one area. Um, I love the augmented that, reality side and what's capable there, because there's no limit to, uh, especially with the imagination you guys clearly have, there's no limit to what you may be able to do just on the AR side. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing we're dealing with Emmy winning um, screenwriters with this. This isn't uh, like you know a hokey type of situation. This is like high tech, yeah, incredible hokey, people. For sure. Yeah, we're we are so lucky to be partnered with for Heroes Only, which is the group in Montreal that I'm working with on this platform. So, um, yeah. So as far as growth goes, I mean, now is the time to to really look at us because there's going to be a lot happening in the next few years. Yeah. You've made the case for that. And let's talk about mm -hmm. the, we, uh, and I like the fact you said, we, again, just mm -hmm. shows innate, you know, a natural team, uh, that you're naturally team centric, but what's great about your team is, uh, you're a, your uh, PK beans is primarily a woman powered company. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how much of this amazing innovation, different out of the box thinking, Ha mm -hmm. has come from the fact that you're one of the few, you know, woman powered companies with, um, is it a majority of your board members or all your board members? Uh, uh, we have women? a, yeah, we have a 75% uh, women represented board and you know, that's, it's somewhat by design, but also we want the right people. And so whether it's female or, or, or male, but at, at the same time, um, it's a right fit for us. I mean, I, I founded the company. Uh, I'm a mom first. Uh, that, that it was really based on a value system. Um, but I, I think that um, where decisions need to be made, whether it be at home, whether it be at work, whether it be in politics, whether it be in community, we need diversity and we need representation of all uh, genders, colors, um, and so it it makes us who we are and um clearly innately, this is clearly that yeah. you don't see this linear out of the business book thinking with you i i'm impressed with what you guys are pulling off thank there. you yeah i mean we 
we we're just true to ourselves and um and i think that's what, you know what really makes us unique and different is that it to the core and that is my team i mean i think about the pandemic and what we went through as a team um i've i've the amount of things that we accomplished in 2020 in the midst of an, a lockdown in a consumer retail apocalypse uh and coming out on the other side is is pretty special and it's a testament to i mean my staff is 100 percent women and they were teaching their kids while they were working while we were all in isolation we rolled out some incredible initiatives including our subscription box including pk replay including a full rebrand um a whole new website um you know it, it it's who we are and we're proud of it and um also in some ways it's it's weird to celebrate it too because it should just be like this i have two girls that's all they know and i'm sure when they go into the world it's all that they will believe um like there should be diversity around, all around but um of course we're proud and um feel that we have a unique uh a, a unique lens because of it and on, on that note uh and this probably wasn't by design but when i was look taking a close look at the company it seems like you're becoming the the big trend now is esg investing environmental social corporate governance mm -hmm. and you yeah. got all three of those and i don't know if you guys were building the company mm -hmm. to be positioned for that but <laughs> it definitely appears that you are have you guys given much thought to that are you starting to hear mm -hmm. that uh you know pk beans is is a nice fit into the esg space we are hearing that on a daily basis, actually. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And again, it's just who we are, um, which makes us always true to to those aspects. Um, when we look at anything, whether it be the product we make, whether we it's the partnerships that we create, whether it's the people that we hire, they really have to be values aligned. And you can look at any successful company, um, like Starbucks, like Disney, um, you look at these companies and their cultures are rich and their values are strong and their mission is clear. And we've always been like that. And that's um, why we've been able to pivot through some pretty economic difficult times. We got through 2009, we got through uh, the pandemic and, um, and here we are on the other side. And that's that I think is a testament to culture and values and mission based. Well, Tracy, clearly it's showing up uh, in mm -hmm. customer satisfaction, in your KPIs, and it's clearly uh, shown through here. So we could go on talk about the Thank company. You. You're doing amazing things, but uh, but we're going to we'll kind of end it there and have you back a lot more yep. because you're an exciting company. I can't wait to have you back. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to be here and I appreciate the uh, the uh, megaphone of opportunity to be able to talk about PK Beans and what we're doing and spread the word. Well, it's well deserved because you guys run a fantastic business. And then on top of that, you're running two more things, a fantastic experience leading to a fantastic brand. So uh, thanks for joining Thank us, Tracy. Thanks, George. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcast platform. Make sure you hop over to the PK Beans website as well. Take a look at the great graphics. Everything they got there shines right through. And hey, why not even become a customer? If you don't have a child, but you've got a grandson, nephew, niece, somebody, a friend of the family who's had just like me. I've got a friend who's got a newborn, so I'm just sending over PK Beans. That's another great way to do diligence. You got to spend your money anyway, so you might as well do the PK Beans. And then that's your ultimate due diligence. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a fantastic day. See you next time.